Hi, right today I'm going to talk to you about being a highly sensitive person. Um, so I've got a few notes that I'm going to refer to here. So um, excuse, I'm not facing the screen all the time. So what is a highly sensitive person? So a highly sensitive person is not just a personality type, like being shy or being extrovert or being quiet. It's um, defined as having a hypersensitive nervous system. So the more I'm going to talk about it um, today, you'll start to see how a being a highly sensitive person, or a HSP for short, contributes to having such illnesses such as chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, autoimmune diseases, depression, OCD, etc. So I'm going to read to you a little bit, explain really what being a highly sensitive person is, how to decipher if you are a highly sensitive person, um, and what you can do um, to help you um, being a highly sensitive person to be able to function um, a little bit more easily. Okay, so um, I'm going to read you a paragraph and see if you relate to any of this. So are you... Are your own feelings easily bruised and do you worry endlessly about hurting other people's? Do you well up when watching charity adverts for illness or animal cruelty? Dislike scary films or feel bothered by loud or irritating noises? So you might think that music coming from someone's earphones is highly irritating when no one else around you is bothered by it. Then if any of these relate to you, then you could be a highly sensitive person. So being a highly sensitive person, um, it's, it's not very well known at the moment, um, but there is lots of research out there on it. About 20% of people in the population are highly sensitive people, um, and this is a mix of both men and women. Um, it's not just you know defined to one, uh, one sex. So there's lots of tests online that you can go and do to see if you fall into the criteria of being a highly sensitive person. Um, there's also a book which I know has a, um, a test within it, which is called The Highly Sensitive Person's Survival Guide. Um, so that probably is worth checking out if you think that you are a highly sensitive person and it will give you a lot more in-depth um, knowledge about what it is like to be a HSP and how you can help yourself. Okay, so what does it mean to be a HSP then? It means that you you get overstimulated very quickly. So you're likely to feel stress um, much quicker than someone else who isn't um, highly sensitive. You will probably feel overwhelmed much quicker than other people um, when if you're a highly sensitive person. You will also have an incredible empathy um, with other people. Now you can be um, empathetic with or empathetic with um, without being highly sensitive. Um, that that is completely possible. But most highly sensitive people really are empaths um, and feel other people's pain and really put themselves in the situation of somebody else um, and and feel like it's happening to them. Um, so that, that can be um, a trait of a highly sensitive person as well. You get very emotional very quickly. You know, you're very hard to um, hide your emotions. And it might be that you're actually sensitive to a lot of physical things, like certain clothes might irritate you quite a lot when they wouldn't irritate anyone. Like basically your hair, like I, I wear my hair back a lot because I find when I've got my hair down, it's really irritating. Um, even just the smallest bit of hair in my face can really, um, really irritate me all day. And different highly sensitive people will have different things that they are highly sensitive about. So it might be that one person really is sensitive to chemicals or they might be sensitive to certain foods. They've got a lot of food allergies. Um, or it might be that you're sensitive to more of the environment around you that you can feel like negative energies. You feel other people's energies, um, which can then drain yours or you're sensitive to light and sound. So it's different for different people, but most people sort of have a bit of a combination um, of all of them. Okay, so sensitive people might find it hard um, 
to 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 do changes so it might be like you know if you're moving house or you're moving jobs or you're starting a new relationship although these are really really good things and you're really happy that these things are happening the highly sensitive person because they process so much more and they think so much more than the average person you know a lot of these events uh, life changing events can be very overwhelming for a highly sensitive person um, so you really need to take care of yourself when you're going through these transitions in life and there's an absolutely excellent website um, a lady whose course that I've signed up for and it's called Conscious Transitions she's based in the States and she does lots of work about obviously going through different changes in your life so it might be starting a new relationship um, and or even being in a relationship and then getting married um, about the struggles that some people have when they're going through these changes if you're a highly sensitive person. Okay, um, so a psychologist, um, Dr. Elaine Aaron, who is a leading um, researcher in the field of being highly sensitive, this is how um, she explains the condition. So she explains it in four letters um, and it, she calls it DOES. So D is for depth of processing. Um, which is key to the whole condition. So a highly sensitive person will process everything around them very deeply. And it's probably not like you're even aware that you're doing this, but you're processing um, sights, sounds, feelings, um, the smallest looks on somebody's face. Um, you're processing this, as, processing this at a really, really kind of deep level and then thinking about it a lot. So O is for overstimulation, which is brought on by the depth of processing. E is for emotional reactivity and empathy. So research shows that highly sensitive people respond more to the emotions of others and situations in general. So if someone around you is really upset, it's likely you're going to get really upset um, because you're reacting to their emotional uh, well-being and just being completely empathetic. And S is for sensitive stimuli. So what I mentioned before, incredibly sensitive to sounds, smells, um, and light so that's how she describes them and also from my research and being a highly sensitive person overthinking um, and really in-depth analytical thinking is another trait that I think a lot of highly sensitive people have um, a lot of people will suffer from things like OCD um, worry anxiety um, as part of being a highly sensitive person because you're just trying to make sense of everything in the world and therefore your your brain is just trying to think about things and analyze things and judge things and compare things and you do it at a very deep level and you do it on a continual basis because you're trying to come to a conclusion but most like most things in life you know there's not an answer to a lot of things so you know your brain's trying to find that solution to things that there just aren't solutions to some of the time okay um, so what else can we say about being highly sensitive? So what can we do to help ourselves? So there is not a cure for being highly sensitive because it's a genetic trait. It's part of you, like you can't get rid of it. Um, so therefore you have to work with it. And, you know, you, you may have not have realised you're a highly sensitive person and therefore you need to put things in place in order to help yourself. So a lot of highly sensitive people need time out. Um, they need time by themselves just to relax and wind down. So I would encourage you to do a daily meditation practice. Even if it's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, then obviously, you know, just take that time to just be in the quiet and just have no stimuli around you. So no television, no music, unless it's the meditation music, um, no one talking to you, no bright lights. You know, so you can just really give all your senses a real break. Um, so I've got a another um, video on meditation, different types that you can do. But if you go onto YouTube, you'll find absolutely loads of meditations that you can try. Um, and there's a app that you can get, which I've tried in the past called Headspace, which actually I started um, in to try and get into meditation and it's really good for introducing you to meditation and putting you on your journey and giving you the confidence to meditate so that is the number one um, thing that I recommend um, I would 
try to, yeah, every day try to have rest and relaxation in your day and um, throughout the day if possible. Um, look at what career you're doing and see if it's suited to your personality type and if you enjoy it or not. Um, I mean, I work in marketing and it is very stressful, but I like the creative side of it. I like being creative with words. I like being creative with design. And that really fulfills that part of me that wants to have that creative um, outlet. So a lot of people go into creative um, fields of work, maybe an artist, graphic designer, etc. Or other people tend to head towards like the more healthcare, healing kind of jobs because that gives them a lot of satisfaction um, and they're just naturally suited to that kind of um, that kind of industry and that kind of career. Surround yourself with people that you like. Surround yourself with people that understand maybe what it's like to be a highly sensitive person and you do need time out you know so if you have to explain to your family um, and friends you know you just need every day just a bit of time out to yourself it's not being selfish it just means that it helps you function on a day-to-day -day basis try not to overexert yourself um, I spent a lot of time really really pushing myself physically you know running half marathons running every day, um, doing all sorts of other sort of physical challenges that I'd set myself. And my body found, although I did this for a long time, my body found it really difficult um, to, to keep up with it, especially without the proper nutrition. So, you know, watch physically activities, what you're doing, and maybe, you know, introduce things like yoga, tai chi, um, you know, energy-based exercises into your routine because your body's going to really adapt well to those so that's a good um, overview of being a highly sensitive person and the things that you can do to help yourself um, there's a few other things that um, one of the psychologists that I found that's also specialized in these areas has said so um, he's also mentioned his Dr. Zeff um, spelled Z-E-F-F, -F. he has said um, HSPs become easily overwhelmed and they need daily downtime um, and you shouldn't compare yourself to others because other people won't need this daily downtime, they probably won't need to meditate every day or take an hour to go and lie down after you get back from work but highly sensitive people probably do so don't beat yourself up or compare yourself to anybody else. As I said before, you feel more deeply and you probably find yourself crying more often than other people. But again, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It doesn't mean you're a crybaby. It doesn't mean any of those things. It just means that you process things on a di different level. And in fact, crying is a good way of releasing emotion and getting it out of your system and stop it getting trapped in your body and then causing further health problems. So, you know, I think it's good to have a good cry. So other identifications of a um, highly sensitive person is he says that, you know, you might enjoy solo sports rather than um, team sports. Um, so, you know, that that's true for me. Um, I don't know about all highly sensitive people, but that's um, one of the things he's identified. Um, he says that they agonize over decisions, but you will have great attention to detail um, and you'll definitely be more aware of consequences but you also worry about upsetting others more than other people other people will. Um, even if they've upset you. That's the one thing I found about highly sensitive people. If someone has upset you, you will then be worried about upsetting them back if you say something to tell them that they've upset you, if that makes sense. Which is just crazy, but that's what being a highly sensitive person is like. But you tend to make very good decisions at the end of your thought processes. Um, so that is a, you know, that's a really good trait to have. And you will notice very small details. So you might notice small details on people. So people's facial expressions that other people won't notice. Maybe changes in people's voice tones. You pick up on that. You're very hyper aware of how people react to you and react to certain situations, which can lead to, again, overthinking and worrying that you've done something to upset somebody. Um, but you're very, you're, you're very tuned in to small details. And you're going to be a people pleaser. You're definitely going to be someone who likes to make people happy. Um, you don't like conflict very much. 
you know, you just want to make sure that everyone around you is happy, having a good time, even if it's at the detriment to your own self. So that's something to really um, look out for. And also when you're sensitive uh, or a highly sensitive person, criticism, you don't take it very well. You know, if they criticise that maybe something that you've done or something you've said, you take it to heart and it can scar you for days and it can really, really upset you. So, you know, look out for that and be aware um, of, of, you know, when someone criticises something, really try and take a step back and think, am I overreacting here? And you might feel other people's pain. Um, HSPs tend to have an incredible empathy and will worry about others a lot and be in tune with how they're feeling, he says. And as I said before, HSPs are very likely, um, or more likely, should I say, to suffer from OCD um, and negative thought patterns, um, intrusive thoughts and things like that. So that is something else to be mindful of. But with all the things that you can do in terms of EFT, meditation, look at all my other videos for tools and techniques, all of those tools and techniques can help being a highly sensitive person, they can help with OCD, they can help with chronic fatigue. Okay, so this is just a really, really short snapshot of what a highly sensitive person is, um, the traits, um, and you know what, what you can do to try and help yourself. And there's famous people with who you know who put their hands up to being a highly sensitive person, and Alanis Morissette is actually one of those people. And the website I mentioned about conscious transitions, she's done those courses as well um, because she has she has suffered um, because generally highly sensitive people do find life a little bit more um, a little bit more challenging than other people. And sometimes when you don't know why, that can be very dis disconcerting within itself. I think as soon as you realise that you are a highly sensitive person, then it helps to explain a lot of things. It helps to put it in perspective, realise that there's not anything wrong with you, that you just do have this um, this personality, well, this genetic trait that means your nervous system is much more overstimulated, much more quicker than the general population. Okay, so I hope that has helped. Any questions, just leave me a comment. Okay, bye.